Hi guys, I trust that you're uh, all well. Uh, today, I'd us to have a very uh, candid uh, conversation about, of course, your exams, right? And what I'm going to share with you today, I know you've never heard of this, even for the lecturers who normally tend to guide students doing accounts. Kindly watch this, right? This is for both lecturers and students alike, right? So uh, at this point, I want to discuss about how custom normally allocates its marks. It will be very important for us to be able to understand this, right? This will help us as we prepare for our exams as well. Because I know right now, uh, all of us, we are, majority of you are very anxious uh, about uh, this coming paper, which uh, it is just in a few weeks from now, right? But I believe this will help you a lot. This will help you a lot. Because now, guys are on uh, the block revisions. And uh, make sure that you've also checked out our block model papers. They really help you a lot. I've literally attached these model papers just below this video, right? So for max allocation in CASNEB or at any given point in time, whenever you're having a CASNEB paper, a question paper, it will always categorize, it will always be categorized into three set of set of questions. The first category, we normally tend to talk about remembering and understanding. The second category, we normally tend to talk about applying and analyzing. Whereas the third category, we normally tend to talk about what? Evaluating and creating. These are three sets. Modes of questions that we'll always tend to find in each and every paper that we'll always be doing. So let me explain this bit by bit so that at least all of us should be on the same boat. So when you are talking about remembering and understanding, at this point, you as a student, regardless of whichever paper that you're doing for class, maybe CPA, CIFA, CS, whichever question or whichever paper that you're doing, so long as it is on this category of either foundation, intermediate, or advanced level. So when you're talking about remembering and understanding, at this point, it is expected that the student has gone through this semester. And of course, there are things that this person has been taught, which he or she should be expected to remember directly from what he or she has studied. So you're literally kind of lifting it from your notes to your question. In this case, you'll find that for foundation level, marks allocated to such is between 30 to 40 percent, a maximum of 40. Under intermediate level, we are talking about between 10 to 20 percent. <laughs> so for guys who are intermediate level, at all times, whenever you are studying, whenever you are doing your revisions, always know that only 10 to 20 percent will come directly as it is from your books. That one I'm telling you for free today. Then for advanced level, my students in advanced level, remembering and understanding, you can either get no question, or if at all is a question for remembering and understanding, this is something that you read directly coming from your book. That would be 0 to 10 percent. 0 to 10 percent only. Uh -huh. This other segment, applying and analyzing. And many a times, for those who have uh, watched my videos, for those who have attended my class, you've always, you've always, here Mwalimu talking about what? Understanding the concept. And the approach of Mwalimu here is always like, in all papers that I'm guiding you guys, I've always insisted on the concept. I've always insisted on the concept. So, on applying and analyzing, at this point, it is expected you as a student to have obtained the knowledge through your learning process. So, this knowledge that you have obtained, you are going to use it to solve situation. In a sense that you are given a question, say, for example, financial reporting. Financial reporting, you are given a question for consolidation or maybe published, right? 
And on that case, you find that you'll always be given additional information. On this additional information, they are always going to take you round, 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 right? It will always be expected of you to have mastered the knowledge for you to be able to apply it. So it is not something that it is going to come directly from your notes, but it is in your syllabus. So the knowledge that you're having, just go through and make sure that you have the knowledge right. So that in this case, you'll be able to apply it very well. So at this point, you'll find that uh, for applying and analyzing a sector or segment, we have for foundation level, it is between 30 to 40 percent. Under intermediate level, it is between 30 to 40 percent. Whereas under advanced level is in between 20 to 30 percent. Again, my people in advanced level. My people in advanced level, you see, 20 to 30 percent. So at this point, it will always be expected of you to have mastered, to have understood the concepts, not cramming, not cramming, to have understood the concept, not cramming. So using this concept, you can easily handle your questions right. Come to evaluating and creating. This is a very interesting area. Why? This concept or this area, yes, it is in your syllabus. Clearly covered. But at this point, it is expected of you being a professional and being a professional student. It is expected of you to have gathered knowledge on your general environment. These are through financial journals. These are through other sources of uh, content where we have a CCA, we have CFA, all this content relating to finance, all this content relating to accounts. It is expected of you to have gathered all this knowledge from all other sources. Yeah? So that your general understanding of things, it is what will help you here. So if you are one student who normally, and of course at this point I'll also put the blame to the teachers or lecturers, right? If at all your lecturer is one person who normally tends to guide you based on whatever that is there on the notes, without not focusing on the general environment, then you should think twice, right? So because of this area, it is expected of you to have mastered, gather the knowledge that you've gone through your, your notes. At the same time, using your general understanding. Remember, these things are in your syllabus. You've been given a guide. You've been given your guide. And that's why even if you go to the CASNEB website on the recommendation of you uh, to study or rather the resources, they'll always give you variety of sources. Because it is expected of you to have a general understanding of the environment of accounts and finance. So in this case, it is expected of you to have that idea all through, through whatever that it is in your syllabus, general understanding now you have to gather that. So that at this point you'll find that for foundation level, we have 10 to 20%. For intermediate level, again, you're about 30 to 40%. Whereas for advanced level, which has a lion's share, up to 60%. Up to 60%. Up to 60%, you can see. Right? So, my people in advanced level, kindly evaluate yourself, do a self-audit on your end, and try to see, is your lecturer doing the right thing? Are you doing the right thing? Right? So, this is very important. This is very, very important for you to master it very well. So you'll find that this is a location for evaluating and teaching. A larger share, it is an advanced level, intermediate, we are about 40%. So at this point, you can agree with Mwalimu that at any given point in time, foundation level, you'll find that at least they, because they are just being introduced in accounts, so you won't be kind of uh, have a lot of the, a lot of a lot of pressure 
because applying, analyzing, and evaluating a maximum is, of course, 60. But when it comes to intermediate level, you see, 80%. When you come to advanced level, this is 90%. And remember, this was changed, or this method was in a, a practice when this syllabus was amended back in 2021, right? So at any given point in time, if at all you've been doing this, or if at all in this case you didn't have this knowledge, which I know majority of you didn't have this knowledge, right now you should know, right? Right now you should, you should know. This is what you should always tend to have. So kindly make sure that you internalize these areas now, this will take me to the most important step. Your revisions and how you normally do your studies, right? I understand that majority of us are victims of what Mwalimu is going to talk about right now. Majority of us are victims of what Mwalimu is going to share with us right now, right? This is the case. You'll find that this student, yeah, he believes in himself or herself. He has a revision kit. So, you're doing your studies and you find a question to be very difficult, right? You're having a lot of hurdles. You can't handle that question. What are you going to do as a student? In your mind, you'll be like, I'm having solution. So, what you're going to do directly, you're going to jump to your solutions. So while doing this, <laughs> please understand that you're doing. And that's why you'll always find that uh, you're repeating this paper so many times to the extent that you'll be like, my village people have done that something, right? It is not your village people, it is you. It is a strategy that you're using. So you find that you're trying a question, then you're having a difficulty on that. All you're going to do is to rush to the solution directly. In that case, you'll be making a very big mistake. I can tell you for sure, right now and here. That's a mistake that you're doing. The best way to always do your revisions is once you find a challenge on the question that you're handling, the best approach would be go to your notes. That is, if you're having very good notes, go to your notes. Try to fetch a solution based on your understanding of the question through your notes. You'll always find a solution on that. So the best, the, the, the most uh, beautiful part of you going through the notes, you will not only be handling that question, but rather you'll be widening your scope of understanding on questions like that. Because going through the notes, it will widen your scope. You not only be solving the question, but you'll also be learning about scenarios that surround such a question. So that even next time when the good examiner has just decided to twist something, at least you'll be having it in mind. You see, it will be very easy for you to solve it. But the moment you are in a question, you find it difficult to rush to the solution. All you'll be doing, trust you me, that will be cramming. And you're going to convince yourself that, ah, I'm okay. You're not okay. <laughs> you're lying to yourself. You're not okay. Because whatever that you've done there is simply to copy the answers. I'm not saying it is bad to have revision kits. But if you're having these kits, let them be point of comparison, not point of reference. Let them be point of comparison. You've done whatever that you've done. You've gone through your notes. You've tried to find the solutions. Now, go to your revision probably whatever that has been suggested. And that's why they are always called what? Suggested solutions. That's why they are always called suggested solutions. Go through your suggested solution. Try to see with what you've done. Now let it be a point of comparison, not point of preference. So from now on, anytime you're doing your revision, I want you to take your revision keys as point of comparison and not point of preference. That will really help you guys a lot. I know you're having limited time to prepare, but Molimu is requesting us kindly make them point of comparison. And that's what it will take me to the next segment, preparation for the exams.
of course, through the knowledge and the experience that we've gathered all through, uh, of course, our years of experience, we can always tend to uh, trace the mode. We can always tend to trace, of course, the matrix of how these questions are always tested. So that's why at this point I'm encouraging all of you, regardless of whether you've been attending our classes or not, whichever school, whichever college that you've been attending your classes, yeah, make sure that you download our block model papers. They really help you a lot. The block model papers that we have, they will help you a lot. In this case, I've attached these model papers just below this video. There are some, of course, some I'll be attaching them as we proceed, but I've attached majority of the model papers just below this video of ours. The link shared below, it will contain all these model papers for August exams. For August exams. You see, they will help you to understand the concepts that are very important because in this case, we'll always focus on there are those major items that you know they never miss. The main concepts they never miss. Then, based on how papers or this, based on the settings, we've analyzed and come up with concepts that we think might be tested. Mark me very well. I'm not saying question. We are really about the concepts that might be tested. Because again, in this case, you'll find that it is very important for you to do your revision uh, in a smart way, right? There are concepts that we think might be tested, which are, have been covered, of course, in these model papers. And in that case, we've also given you further areas that not only this, but you should also be looking at, of course, uh, the mode or other concepts that are very important, which we've literally guided you. So at this point, Make sure that you've downloaded these block model papers. I know they'll help you. Uh, that's what I'm sure. The concepts around the questions, they'll help you. So in this case, you'll only get the model papers. But if you want the solutions on the same, plus, of course, the aspect solution in both video formats, as well as in theory format. In this case, this one, I'm not giving you for free, this one. This one allowed to charge you. It has also taken us time to prepare this, right? So this one allowed to charge you, allowed to charge you when you want to access the video content of the block model papers that we have prepared. That one I'll just have to charge you. I can tell you for free right now. Of course, you can always reach us out on this number, 0708-068-851. To get access to the solutions of the model paper, which I know... They'll help you a lot. I'm not saying this just to market ourselves, but I'm saying this because I know it will help you a lot. It will help you a lot. So uh, to this point, I want you guys to internalize whatever that Molimu has shared with us. Yeah, I want you to internalize whatever that Molimu has shared with us, more so this segment and how the marks are always allocated. And after exams, after exams, they have always done yeah, after exams, of course, you always call Mwalimu, Munanulia Mwalimu Nyama, which I, I always appreciate, right? Which is very okay, and I really always do appreciate. So at this point, just take in note of what Mwalimu has mentioned. Try to apply the few strategies that I've shared. I know I could be, if at all I could be having all day, I could have shared with you so many tricks and tips. So, but with the few that I've shared, they are golden. With the few that I've shared, they are golden and they will help you a lot. They will help you a lot. They will help you a lot. So to this point, I just want to wish you guys all the best as you prepare for your exams. For those who are still not sure of whether they are going to revise or not, make that decision right and now. You can take advantage of the revision classes that we have. Use the classes. They will help you a lot. Yeah. So this point, I just want to wish you all the best, guys. And see you in our next class, whereby we'll be discussing more of block model paper questions. To that point, thank you so much. See you then. Bye-bye.